In this video, I will discuss the frontal bone in detail. The word frontal is a Latin word which means forehead. This green is the frontal bone. Frontal bone is the bone of the skull and among the skull bone, it is the cranial bone. Although this bone also form part of the face that is the forehead, but the majority part of this bone forms the protective covering around the brain. That's why it is included in the cranial bones and not in the facial bones. Now in this diagram you can see that in the frontal bones are present the frontal nasal sinus. So the frontal bone is the pneumatic bone. Pneumatic bones are those bones in which an air filled cavity is present. Now let me isolate the frontal bone. This is the frontal bone with the anterior view. This is the lateral view of the frontal bone. This is the posterior view of the frontal bone. This is the superior view of the frontal bone. And this is the inferior view of the frontal bone. The frontal bone consists of four parts. The squamous part, the nasal part, the zygomatic process and the orbital part. Now let's begin with the squamous part. The squamous part is the vertical flat and the biggest part and it is the main region of the forehead. It extends from the coronal suture to the supraorbital margin. This is the external squamous part of the frontal bone and this is the internal squamous part of the frontal bone. In the internal squamous part of the frontal bone is present the frontal lobe of the brain while the external squamous part of the frontal bone forms the main region of the forehead. Now let's move to a different model that is more accurate. This foramen in the frontal bone is called as the supraorbital foramen and this margin is called as the supraorbital margin. Now the medial one third of the supraorbital margin which is medial to the supraorbital foramen is smooth and round while the lateral two third of the supraorbital margin which is lateral to the supraorbital foramen is sharp. Now above the supraorbital margin is an elevation called supraciliary arc and the imaginary meeting point of the two supraciliary arc is called the glabella. Above the supraciliary arc is present two more elevation. These elevation are a little bit difficult to see and are called the frontal tuber. The external squamous surface of the frontal bone is smooth while the internal squamous surface of the frontal bone is rough having pits. These pits are produced by the gyri of the frontal lobe. On the internal surface there is also visible vascular marking as you can see in this diagram. These vascular marking are produced by the meningeal vessels. Also on the internal side in the midline there is a crust called the frontal crust and below the crust at the junction of the frontal and the ethmoid bone a foramen is present called the foramen cecum. This hole is the interior cranial fossa and the frontal bone forms the floor of the interior cranial fossa in the interior and the lateral direction. Other bones that has contribution in forming the floor of the interior cranial fossa are the ethmoid bone and the sphenoid bone. Now we came to the nasal part. Between these two supraorbital margin is present the nasal part of the frontal bone. And as you can see that the nasal part of the frontal bone below form an arch called 
the nasal arch as you can see this is the nasal arch and it is attached to three paired cranial bones from medial to lateral these are the nasal bone the maxillary bone and the lacrimal bone the prominent feature of the nasal part is the nasal spine and it is present in the midline and posteriorly it joined with the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone as you can see in this diagram the nasal spine of the frontal bone joining with the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone now if you look at the inferior view of the frontal bone you will see a u shaped notch and this is called the ethmoidal notch and in this notch lies the ethmoid bone here now you can see the u shaped ethmoidal notch lodges the ethmoid bone in the posterior view you can clearly see this green is the frontal bone this is the u shaped ethmoidal notch and in the ethmoidal notch lies the ethmoid bone now we came to the zygomatic process there are two zygomatic process in the frontal bone the two zygomatic processes joins with the two zygomatic bones here we will take one zygomatic process as a representative this is the zygomatic process it has two margin one is the anterior margin and the other one is the posterior margin this is the anterior margin while this is the posterior margin now as you can see from the posterior margin of the zygomatic process rises the temporal line and this temporal line as it move upward it bifurcate into superior and inferior temporal line this is the superior temporal line and this is the inferior temporal line now if we look at the inferior view of the frontal bone again then here you can see this rough triangular area this triangular area articulate with the greater wing of the sphenoid bone let me show you this is the sphenoid bone and as you can see on the sphenoid bone there is also a rough triangular area over here and these two triangular areas on the frontal bone and the sphenoid bone joins with each other now you can see in this model the triangular area of the frontal bone joining with the triangular area of the sphenoid bone next is the orbital part of the frontal bone the orbital part of the frontal bone include the two bony orbital plates as you can see these orbital plate extend from the supra orbital margin and have a triangular structure and two surfaces this one is the orbital surface while this is the cerebral surface the orbital part of the frontal bone has a major contribution in forming the roof of the orbital cavity let me show you in a complete skull model the roof of the orbital cavity is formed by two bones that is the frontal bone and the sphenoid bone this green is the frontal bone while this is the sphenoid bone and as you can see that the frontal bone has major contribution in forming the roof of the orbital cavity compared with the sphenoid bone in the orbital part of the frontal bone there are two depression one is on the anterior lateral side that is here and this is called as the lacrimal fossa and in the lacrimal fossa is present the lacrimal gland as you can see in this model this is the lacrimal gland lying in the lacrimal fossa the second depression is on the anteromedial side that is over here 
and this depression is called as the trochlear fossa the frontal bone articulate with 12 skull bones these include the two nasal bones through the fronto nasal suture the two maxillary bones through the fronto maxillary suture the two lacrimal bones through the fronto lacrimal suture the two zygomatic bone through the fronto zygomatical suture and the two parietal bones through the coronal suture the two other bones that are left are the ethmoid and sphenoid bone and for that we have to remove the two parietal and occipital bone in this model we have removed the occipital and the parietal bones so that you have a look at the interior of the skull this green is the frontal bone and this is the ethmoid bone and the suture that is present between the frontal bone and the ethmoid bone is called fronto ethmoidal suture this suture is more clearly visible in the orbit as you can see this is the frontal bone and this is the ethmoid bone and the suture that is present between these two bones is called the fronto ethmoidal suture again this green is the frontal bone and this is the sphenoid bone and the suture that is present between the frontal bone and the sphenoid bone is called sphenofrontal suture now embryologically the frontal bones are two in number and both of these bones are separated by the median frontal suture the remaining of the median frontal suture is seen in adult at the region of glabella as the metopic suture this is the metopic suture which is the remnant of the median frontal suture that's all about the frontal bone thank you